uh, our discussion I don't ah uh, okay following our discussion about uh, uh, separation of content and style okay uh, another thing you want to think is that you want you can for example want to change the style of uh, all titles for example so this is something that uh, it's you you always do okay another thing is uh, how you dis especially distribute things so sometimes you want to distribute in one way and uh, another way according to the the device or something so uh, okay so this is in Portuguese sorry but the, the the steps to separate things is you add semantics to the content so you get the content and you some in some way add semantics to it and then you associate the elements the semantics of the elements or the role of the elements to some kind of style so this is the idea if uh, we we may compare it we may think about it as we do when you use a word processor by using styles i don't know if you use styles in a word processor but you may imagine that in a word processor you can produce the text in this way putting the, the 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 font of the letters the shape and so on and so forth but if you wish you can define that in a word processor this is a title this is the the standard and you can associate the style to each kind of style okay so this is the idea so for example you may imagine that you have this this html thing so you define uh, what is the things, okay? But uh, you you define the role of the things. You tell this is a header, this is a paragraph, but you don't define specifically how it will appear, okay? Uh, okay. There is also some XML things that I will not explain today, but you can in XML you can even define your own tags, okay? And then you associate the the elements or the roles to the styles you want. Okay. So uh, how do you do that? By using uh, CSS. Okay. When you use CSS, what you do is the following. Uh, uh, you you can do that in two ways. Okay. What's happened to here? Four hours. And yeah. I don't know what's happened, but okay. I, I, I read that. Okay. You can do it in two ways. The first way is you can, you can get the role of some element. Some, for example, you can get the role of a header and tell that the header has some kind of style. Okay? So, uh, for example, uh, Oh, let me see if I remember by hand how to add style here. Uh, it's not easy. I want to try to do that. I, I, I usually use some kind of uh, helping thing to do that. So I will not try to do that. Or I can do that. Let me see if I do that in my page. No, I don't do that in my page. Because I'm, I'm thinking in uh, inline uh, CSS. Let's go forward. We don't have too much time. So the thing is, you, you can tell, for example, ah, that your header has this style. Okay? And then, whenever you use the, this header in the document, it gets this style. But you can also use an element of HTML we call class. Okay? And this is something that's interesting. That is nearby what we do in XML. Okay? What's that? We can define classes. And each class is in, in, in CSS you have this dot here. Before the name of the class. And you define your style. Okay? And whenever you want something has this style. You tell this element. You put in this element the attribute class. 
a new tail. Okay, this is the class normal or this is the class something. So this element will will be from this class and this CSS will put this thing in a specific style. Okay? So when you do this thing, you separate the content from this presentation by using the style. And the idea is, for example, if you go to Wikipedia, okay, and you, you go, uh, there is something we call single source. Single source is a principle in which you have one source and several presentations. So, for example, if you go to Wikipedia and you, you read on your notebook or in your desktop, you see this kind of presentation. But if you ask to print it, or if you go to your uh, mobile device, has a different presentation. Then you enter in the, uh, in the Wikipedia by the mobile, it's a different presentation. Just changing the style sheet. Okay? And if you ask to print, it's a different style again. So it changes the style for the same content. And you have different presentations. So this is the, the main purpose of separating content and style. Okay? And uh, the basic idea is uh, you use this... Uh, Sorry, you use this, instead of putting the style, you use this class thing. Okay, it's not working anymore. It's stop it. Okay. You use this class thing. Okay. And in the HTML5, they added new tags with semantics like header uh, to avoid to use class to everything and to standardize some elements or the semantics of some elements. So they have header, they have uh, footer, aside, and so on and so forth. So uh, to finish, this the thing of more semantics in the tags of HTML files, which started to put style on the documents okay uh, now became something uh, that people exploit to the semantics uh, uh, to the to the semantics by itself so the basic idea is the following uh, there are some specifications now uh, micro formats rdfa and so on and so forth whose idea is the following Let's use the, the things like, like class or so on and so forth to put semantics in the documents. So what happens with the, what is microformats? The idea of microformats is the following. Uh, we want to, to create some kind of annotations in the HTML. Okay, so we want to put some annotations in the HTML. But how will you do that? We don't want to break the native approach, which means the following. I don't want to change the HTML. I, want, I don't want to create a new thing inside the HTML. I want just use the things they, uh, uh, that a red exists. Okay? So, uh, so they use patterns. They use what I call annotation patterns, in which you annotate things in the HTML. And how do you do that? You, they take advantage of the native vocabulary. So they use, for example, the class that I presented now, the class thing, or the ID, or things that a red exists in HTML and gives a new interpretation to these things. So let's, let's take an example. So they have a lot of uh, specifications for calendar, uh, presentation card, uh, receipt, uh, resume, and many, many things. GL information. So the idea is you have these specifications to add uh, metadata of these things in your page. So, for example, there is the age receipt in which you put receipts. Okay? What's the idea? Imagine that receipt of... Uh, uh, Beckett macaron and cheese. No, now it's, it's not a good time to talk about that, right? Okay, so, and then you produce an HTML page, okay? 
But then you do the following. You tell, okay, I will follow, I will follow the age recipe. So you see here, I'm using a class. You see here, in the HTML, I'm using a class. Okay, but this class is not just the connection to the style, not just that. It follows the name of the classes, follow the age recipe standard. In such a way that someone can go there and it will know the, where is the ingredients. It will know where is the instructions and so on and so forth. Okay? So now, for example, Google, Google can understand that. Okay? So if you publish your receipt and you use the micro formats, when you go to Google and ask for something, it will organize things much better. You know now that Google has this kind of uh, summary of some pages of something, you see, blogs and these things. And most of these things are based on um, micro formats. They interpret micro formats and they pre-organize things in the, in the search because they can understand the things. And you see that many services of Google use micro formats. So for example, YouTube. If you get YouTube and you ask the source of the page of YouTube, you will see that they use several micro formats to identify author and many things inside the page. Okay? So this is a kind of light way to put semantics in your page. It's not hard semantics. We will talk about semantics more. And there are another specification we call RDF. A, which is the same idea but is based on RDF, which we will show further. Okay? So, this concludes our class today. Okay? And, uh, okay.